A-Class, C-Class, E-Class or S-Class. This video was requested by you because you wanted to see the differences between the Mercedes sedans or saloon or limousine, as we say in German, or Berlin, as we say in France, here at the Paris Motor Show at the Mercedes booth, because here we can really compare A, C, E, S. If you maybe, you know, seek a comparison between A and C or between C and E, or maybe think, oh, I get this one here and then maybe an A-Class as a secondary vehicle or whatever. Or if you're just interested, join us here in this very interesting comparison on Autogefühl. The compact Mercedes A-Class is now also available as a sedan. And here on Autogefühl, we also want to show you this version. For the European market, it will be built in Rastatt, where also all the other compact models are being built, A-Class and B-Class in Germany. The US market will receive one from the plant in Mexico and the Chinese market, the one from China. And this is also primarily thought for the Chinese market, but as I said, it will also be available elsewhere. The AMG line features this diamond pin grill, my favorite Mercedes grill. Sensors are hidden behind this 2D logo, but with a 3D ring around. AMG line also features stronger lower bumper lips. This one here, for example, an A250, that would be already a quite sporty version, also with the all-wheel drive front plus rear-wheel drive on demand. That's the system. Headlamps start with halogen, optional LED, and then those ones here, the multi-beam LED, also with a high beam function. 4 meters 54 or 14 foot 9 is the total length. That's about 13 centimeters or half a foot longer than the hatch. And of course, the front is pretty much the same. Rims 16 to 19 inch. Those ones are the top 19 inch rims here in the black scheme AMG style. Also with black frames here around the windows. And then, of course, the basic difference is that we have here then a falling roof line, unlike the hatch that would just end right there, somewhat like that. It will be very interesting how that one plays out for the luggage capacity later on. In the rear, you can see those horizontally tall tail lamps, and this is more like a you know, smaller C-class sedan then. And, well, trunk-wise, this is an advantage then also. You have 50 liters more, 420 liters then, so 50 liters more than in the hatch. So, you see, it's just, it's way longer. I see my, my arm completely disappears in there. And also, it's quite wide to load things in. That's also due to the new A-Class generation. They have fixed that because the tail lamps were going inward like this before. The only disadvantage is that in the hatch, you can easier load bulkier things in and out. Here, you are, of course, limited as usual with sedans. Some more space below that. So, here, uh, look under the hood. You start with the A200 with a 1.4 liter petrol, 163 horsepower. Then there's the 2 liter 4 cylinder, this one here. Either it's an A220 with 190 horsepower, or then here, the very one A250, 2 liter petrol engine, 4 cylinder, 224 horsepower. Also available then with the all wheel drive 4 Matic. And there will also be a diesel 180D 1.5 liter with 116 horsepower. Suspension wise, by the way, there's a base suspension, there's a sport suspension, minus 50 millimeters, and then there's it's an adaptive, comfortable suspension. And it looks almost the same for the interior, for the seats. Soon tell you more about that. First of all, good build quality here at the inside, leather red on the door cover. Then this has aluminum style. Also for bigger bottle, it fits very well. So what you already find in the A-Class nowadays, a build quality you maybe had just in the E-Class in the past. Then those seats, there are base seats available, comfort seats and sport seats. Those ones here have a little bit more shoulder support, for example. A little bit more, let's say, com complicated than the base seats. Take a look inside. And you also have um, nice seat surface materials. Those ones here are the optional animal skin packages. But you can also have, for example, an article of full leatherette or also um, sporty Dynamica microfiber inside mix with the leather red on the outside. So electric seat control, the lower part you can manual and lengthen right there. A little bit steeper right there. It's always complicated to do it here on the screen while the door is not closed. Seat heating is available and even seat cooling. The steering wheel can be adjusted manually. Here we go. And the question is with 1 meter 86 or 6 foot 1, pretty close 
as for the headroom here, at, le at least when you pick the panoramic roof. Here in the front you can see you start with a 7 inch screen on the left and 10.25 inch on the right. This is an optional, the highest equipment level with all the screen all over the place, two 10.25 inch screens. You control with the left thumb the left screen and with your right thumb then you control the right screen or also then with touch on the right screen. Take another look at that when you sit behind me. The interior overview, everything is very well organized, leather red dashboard cover. Then you can see the two screen layout right there, but you can also, for example, use the touch function. That's cool actually. So um, the GPS map is also pretty impressive. It always depends also, yeah, I mean, that the car is not properly powered right there. So sometimes it can be a little bit laggy also, depending on the internet connection has a very clean resolution. You can connect your phone via Bluetooth, but also with the um, smartphone connection. And by the way, if you rest your hand on here while controlling the screen, you can see here a lot of fingerprints is being collected right there on the, uh, on the sleek black surfaces right there. And also a look at the darker interior without the strange red stuff. <laughs> this one also the so-called edition one. But those seats here with Dynamica microfiber on the inside and leather red on the outside you can also get for all usual Mercedes A-Class. Interesting mix and makes sense sustainability wise and also stays warm in winter and cool in summer. So also you see those other sports seats with some shoulder accentuations and I can really recommend you to go for this mix. So what about the rear leg room and also the headroom right in the rear there? So first of all, I do fit in here as a tall adult, even if a tall adult is driving. Not plenty of leg room, but it's still the compact segment. And we also see that in the A35 with the sport seats, with the slimmer sport seats, you have a little bit more leg room. Interesting. Headroom wise, yes, it's a sedan, but it's a little bit longer than the hatch and it does exactly fit. My hairs already touch the ceiling, but you know, so it's a little bit more cramped than in the hatch, I would say, because the roof line falls a little bit, but it's still okay. So yes, you can use the car with four adults that are also tall. It does work very closely, but does work. Then some armrest right there with foldable cup holders. Isofix on the outer seats each. And we also have two more USB-C ports in the rear and also oh, small turbine vents additional for the rear. 15 centimeters longer than the A-Class sedan is the C-Class sedan here at 4 meters 70 or 15 foot 4 and also with a little bit different front right there. Interesting in that they both have one stripe in the LED daytime running lights so the A-Class you see that was that like C-like span this one here just slightly different updated since the most recent facelift and already for the C-Class you can also get a real Mercedes star like this in the executive variant for example or you can get the more sporty variant here with two horizontal fins or then AMG line would be with diamond pin grills and then there are also those more powerful AMG versions and indeed a high spec A-Class is already as expensive as a lower spec C-Class so it is indeed you know, a question if you would go for an A-Class or on C-Class. Let's see also what difference it makes on the interior. First, let's take a stroll around the exterior. So in the distance, we can still see the A-Class sedan with those new modern tail lamps. And if you look now at the C-Class sedan right there, well, you can see that the side profile is somewhat similar. The A-Class maybe has a little bit sharper falling down hood right there. But in the side profile, it is you know, not so different here with this classic sedan style. Just you can already see that those tail limbs look really different. And you somehow also get the size different that the A-Class looks a little bit sportier because it's just a little bit smaller. The rear is indeed a big difference design-wise. That's why I think the A-Class is leading it at the moment because it more has those horizontally oriented tail limbs. This one here, a rather classic style, but it's of course matter of preference. Well, so which one do you prefer in the rear? The A-Class or the C-Class? And again, the price difference is just a couple of thousand euros and we had also some feedback where someone said, hey, the A-Class is in my market 
basically the same price in the C-Class. So indeed, between A and C-Class, price and size worth, there's not such a big difference. And now let's head to the interior. See what's different here. Also good build quality at the inside of the doors. It's not entirely hard here, it's a little soft cover. Then matte wood is being used. For example, you can also get some um, aluminum stuff, for example, leather red right there. And then on the interior, of course, the C-Class is a little bit older model than the new A-Class. And therefore, we already have, since the facelift, more digitalization, but not as digitalized as in the A-Class. Soon more about that. Or this Tronic also at the new steering wheel now. The seats are a little bit wider, you can see, than in the A-Class, so you have a little bit more room. Let's just try that right now. Still remember how it was in the A-Class. And, yeah, I mean, if you're not that tall, it will not make a big difference. However, you know, I'm 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1, as you might know, as an Autogafu subscriber, and... I do feel a difference when, when uh, sitting here, so especially in the lower area, just just have a little bit more, you know, more width to sit on. Um, Headroom-wise, it always depends if you have a panoramic roof or not. This one here is also equipped with a panoramic roof, and that's actually not a big difference than 2DA class. But indeed, I think just the seating area is a little bit wider, and therefore you feel indeed that you are a segment above although the car is just a little bit longer. So the interior here has a bigger middle console than the A-Class. This one is the recent facelift. You can also check the full review if you want to see this infotainment system in action. There's also a smaller screen available as base and also analog instruments still available. Those ones are the optional digital gauges here now. It looks modern with an updated one, but you can see that this one is basically attached. It was not meant to look like this at first, and the A-Class has a more integrated concept now as it was already planned with this digital concept. And you also do not have the latest edition of the MBUX system. So, some couples here in the front. Um, build quality wise, you do not see a big difference between A and C-Class, to be honest. This is basically um, on the same level. Let's see the difference in the rear leg room to the A-Class. I have set the seat to when I would be driving and well, the seat does have some gaps here directly where knees are. That's very cleverly done and you have some more knee room. It's again not the biggest difference indeed. Headroom wise, I feel it's even a little bit less because when I put my, hand, uh, my head to the side here, I even hit the ceiling with my head. So as for how the exterior length is being used on the interior, the A-Class is the better deal. And now looking at the trunk area, we just compare, you might remember how I reached in there and there you can see this is basically the difference in the length. The trunk is just longer. I can hardly reach the rear seats, whereas in the A-Class I could touch them easier. So this is indeed where you gain more length. So those 15 centimeters on the outside are basically, you know, a little bit longer hood, but also longer trunk, longer rear overhang. There are so many different engines available for the Mercedes C-Class. Check out the driving review to get more details and that, that's and we also have specific versions we've driven. The biggest difference here to the A-Class is that we here not only have the four-cylinder petrol and diesel engines, there is also the six-cylinder, the three-liter six-cylinders, both petrol and diesel engines. This is the basic difference, and then also not with a transverse mount, but also then with a longitudinal mount. 4 meters 92 or 16 foot 1 is the Mercedes E-Class sedan. That's a step of 22 centimeters increase if you compare it to the Mercedes C-Class. So a little bit bigger difference, you know, like from A to C, now from C to E, was 15 centimeters, and now 22 centimeters. Also the price increase is now massive, whereas A and C are quite close together. From C to E you have to pay at least 20,000 euros or dollars more. So that's a big difference. And, well, you get it, second stripe here in those front headlamps with the daytime running lights. So you can always see between C, E and S class. C class has one stripe, E class has two stripes there in the front and the S class will have three. Soon more about that. 
They are also the same schematic with the C-Class in the front grille there. They're quite alike. So have different stylings, the classic one with the standing Mercedes star, then the AMG line with the diamond pin dots, or then this one, normal modern grille. This one here then with the two horizontal fins right there. Well, if you're standing right here, it's a little bit higher. You already feel that. And as I said, longer. Let's take more looks at that. This one, by the way, is the E-Class plug-in hybrid. But other than that, the engines are pretty much the same. So um, since both C and E-Class have those longitudinal mounts, they also use partially the same engines. And of course, it also will be um, basically harmonized over the life cycle of the vehicles. And also the rims. Those ones here are, in this case, 18 inch. There are, of course, bigger ones available. The side profile here is a little bit different. This dropping line is a little bit stronger. The other ones have a more round design. And this car just sits more upright. You can see that the C and the A class have a little sportier touch, a little bit flatter build. This one here higher and more executive style, more classic in the style, more traditional. Um, than the other ones. However, the basic shape right here speaks one design language. You can see there's also a basic resemblance between C and E class in the rear, but it is a little bit bulkier. Also, the tail lamps are somewhat bigger and they're going to have a day different um, daytime signature. And let's also open the trunk directly. Bear in mind that this one is the plug-in hybrid, but just as for the length, um, because here in the plug-in hybrid we have this really strange step right in there because the battery is placed in in here. So I don't think it makes too much sense. But usually it would just be carrying out all the way through without this step then. And then I can I can, uh, <laughs> I can barely reach that in length. So you see you have even more length. But you see the width, for example, and also this hole where you can load things in and out. This is all the same with almost all saloons. It's just about the length, which has again increased here in the E-Class. Now the interior, what do you get for 20,000 euros more, or the 20,000 dollars more? The inside of the door, the design is quite similar. Here again, matte wood is being used, galvanized window buttons. This one will be special. The Burmester 3D surround system is really special in the E-Class. This could be one reason for music lovers to go for this one, because it's very special. It's basically the best sound we know in the car industry at the moment. Then take a look at the interior without me sitting in. Steam wheel is actually the same. The gauges are already different. It's a widescreen layout like in the new A-Class. This one here is a little bit higher as well. Then the seats, you can see they are even wider than in the C-Class. And you can expect that they offer more luxury. That should also be the case for this segment. Is it the case? Let's see. Of course, also different seat services here available. Even a base E-Class, for example, at least in Germany, starts with fabric on the inside and article leather on the outside. A very clever and sustainable choice. Then, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit more comfortable still than the C-Class. You do feel a difference, definitely, especially if you're a tall person. This is here, you know, in the C-Class you say, yeah, it's actually quite good. A seating position, let's start to drive. A little bit more drive oriented and here when you take a seat here then you see like ah, let's just rest for a second and relax that's the basic difference um, the steering wheel can be controlled electrically right there again most of the stuff you see then is an option that's of course one big flaw with the premium manufacturers they usually start very naked <laughs> in the equipment and then you have to pay everything extra and the price really raises very high that's, of course, a problem with the E-Class. So, yes, sound system, amazing. I can really tell you that. And even more seating comfort already here in the front. This is really cool. And headroom. It's good that we also have the panoramic roof here so we can really compare it. It's still not much headroom left, but a little bit more than in A and C-Class. So the interior overview right there, again with this dual screen layout, it's offline at the moment, it's um, quite often with those show cars. I just love how they integrate the wide matte wood area here. And also at the middle console, that you're not forced to get this uh, high glossy black all over the place. So indeed, interior wise, I think the E-Class is my favorite. 
It is a little bit more traditional, but it's also a little bit more exclusive. So you have some points where you say, yeah, the build quality maybe is a little bit better here and it also should be. But they are, of course, also using a lot of same parts here in the vehicle. As for the steering wheel, for example, again, right thumb controls this screen, left thumb this screen. Same as new, new, new A-Class, but even the A-Class has the newer infotainment system because this one here, both in C and E-Class, is still not a touchscreen. And now what about the rear compartment here in the E-Class? I think the door opens a little bit wider. That's better to get in and out. And you can see now I have, although the seat is actually quite wide, so the seats are a little bit bigger than in the C-Class, but still there's more leg room. There should be also still some room in front of my knees left. If you think about that, we almost reached five meters and over, you know, um, way over, over 15 foot then. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole package is not that good, you know. So much length on the exterior, not so much room and length on the interior. That's a general problem of this um, upper mid-size sedan segment. But you can see there's a difference to, to the C-Class that you can easy sit, you are very easier sit with four adults just next to each other or behind each other. And also headroom wise, this is no problem now. However, if you then think about the A-Class sedan, which is then way shorter than the E-Class sedan, you know, you can also drive with four adults if you know maybe not like a long road trip, but then the big difference, if you think about the interior room from A-class to E-class even, this direct comparison, is really rather the trunk length. But of course, the seating comfort is definitely better here in the E-class. Just to take a look under the hood here with a two liter four cylinder diesel combined with an electric motor. Very interesting in this diesel hybrid concept for sure, diesel plug-in hybrid concept. But again with this limited trunk I see also limited use for this vehicle indeed. But for sure one of the most economic engines they are offering. Other than that the best seller is for sure a classic diesel for example in Germany. Even a four cylinder diesel of course and if you want to have some more fun you would probably go for the three liter bigger petrol engine. And now the S-Class starts with 5 meters 11 or 16 foot 7. In this case it's even the long wheelbase version. This one then is 5 meters 24 or 17 foot 2. So even longer so you first have a step from E-Class to S-Class even 20 centimeters more. And then another 13 centimeters if you have the long wheelbase version. So definitely a different appearance. This one here also then with the classic Mercedes star on the front grille. Also you can now see the headlamps. They have those three stripes in the LED daytime running light. You can see and count them here as well. It's then one, two, three. This one is a very classic layout then with the executive style. This one also the plug-in hybrid with a special black paint you can see a very fine structure inside the paint and this also the whole car sits a little bit more upright you see this executive style in comparison also to the, to the e-class of course you at some point get to a length where you get problems if you are also driving you know where you need a parking spot or in narrow cities this one then they're more for chauffeur purposes for example we'll see more about it on the interior very soon in the rear you can see the taillights also have those three stripes and you immediately feel also how wide the car is even if you compare it to the E-Class right there when I reach over here for example also the rear window is definitely flatter and especially for the S-Class this lower end so the lower end is actually wider than the top part and this is not the same case as for the E-Class. And now to the S-Class, by the way, we also have a soft close here. Ah, magic. Once more. But that's of course also available for the E-Class. Then, inside of the doors, this is just another trim. I mean, with this dark wood, it's of course a rather traditional style. But you can pick that in different colors and stuff. Also with the steering wheel, for example, with those wood inlets. It looks a little bit more old school. 
but then again you can also pick which one you want to have. Look at those seats, they are even wider, they almost look like a sofa in, in itself. So this is again a little bit more different than even to the E-Class. But also looking forward, does it really make more comfort here in the S-Class than in the E-Class when you sit down? Yeah, I mean, it's even wider in the seating area, you see here, even if I, you know, put my legs on here, there's still so much room at both sides, very interesting. Um, also interesting, in the lowest position here, the seats are basically leaning backwards. That's not good for the company. I wonder why this is even possible. It's not possible in that way in the E-Class, even if you put the lowest area right in the front, so I would always raise them in the rear just a little bit. And, I mean, I wouldn't say that, you know, the additional seating width gives you more comfort. So, actually, this is just from first test seating, there are different seats always available, also different seat forms. But, actually, I feel I sit a little bit more comfortable in the E-Class. You know, on a very high level, this is also a great comfortable seating position. But, um, it somehow feels a little bit more right in the E-Class to me. Also, the whole cockpit is a little bit wider even. The basic layout is the same with this dual screen setup here. Um, but somehow the E-Class feels it would be a little bit more fitted around the driver. Here again, the interior perspective. The basic layout again is somewhat similar to the E-Class. This area is a little bit higher than the s was the first one that had this dual screen setup then here like one screen it goes through. I think our first test review goes back to 2012, so it's also the oldest of those cars and you sometimes also see that. This is also a little bit more playful with more, you know, swinging lines and some more room also on this dashboard. And the s is also about a lot of animal skin use, so that's of course then even less sustainable. By the way, also money-wise, 80,000 euros at least, so that's a 30,000 euro step from the E to the S class and I wouldn't say that I miss something in the E class I see here. Let's check out the rear here. Of course as for the legroom this one is the long wheelbase version so we have even more legroom and this executive seating position which is making you especially in the motor show just sleep and, and by the way microfiber pillows here so that's cozy then. Ah. Holgeis has to hold the, the the heavy camera all the time, so I just take it very slowly in the home. Holger has to stand still and I relax. <laughs> well, about that legroom, you can see here, I mean, there's plenty of legroom here, of course. This is still the you know long wheelbase version. If we would deduct the long wheelbase version, we would then have a little bit more legroom than in the E-Class, but I mean, this additional 15 centimeters of wheelbase um, from the long wheelbase version, if you deduct that, then it would be maybe like this. So yes, a little bit more than in the E-Class, but then again, the usage of room, if you have the exterior-interior comparison, because I have this legroom maybe also in the Škoda Kodiak, just, you know, just to mention. Rear seat entertainment is available here, um, inductive charging plate for the rear passengers, there's also folding tables available you can get so much extra equipment and of course with 80,000 euros base price you're not right ready here in this you know this very executive variant of the S class probably something towards 150 160,000 euros and then you're actually uh, right there so um, this is a segment where it's really not about price anymore one two three four USB devices here in the very end this is a champagne or what's no, no champagne here, just a <laughs> storage device, but you can surely get also some champagne holders here. And you also have electric control of those rear seats. So, for example, can make it more upright if you don't want to sleep. That's a possibility. Or you can also go a little bit backward and forward. So definitely the most comfortable seating position for the rear passengers. But if you're driving yourself, then the E-Class will be still just fine. Of course, bigger engines are being used in the S-Class and predominantly the V6 and V8. This one here is the 3-liter V6 petrol combined with a plug-in hybrid, so 367 horsepower plus 122 horsepower EQ boost. Pretty powerful, but yet you also have the plug-in hybrid possibility. So a little bit plug-in hybrid, especially today, 
but the usual S-Class are of course rather bought than either as a chauffeur long term run diesel car or if you more drive it also as a personal fun car than with a strong bigger of the petrol engines. And now to our conclusion, the big comparison of the Mercedes sedans, the current ones, A-Class, C-Class, E-Class, S-Class. So first of all, which one is your favorite? It was very interesting also for me to see the very little difference, how you get step by step. Well, I mean, the best price performance ratio is for sure the A-Class, especially if you look at the room on the interior, because when you go to the C-Class and the E-Class step by step, you know, you already have basically enough room in the A-Class. The seating comfort then rises bit by bit. The C-Class is a good driver's vehicle, that's for sure. Design-wise, the A-Class is my favorite, especially with those new tail lamps, because I think the other ones look a little bit too conservative as for the tail lamps. The new A-Class sedan here, I think, the sleekest in the design and to me somehow the most pleasing one. Seating, I think the E-Class is my favorite because it has a very, very comfortable seating position. Also, sound system-wise, the E-Class is my favorite. And when you think about driving, I mean, we have driven the new A-Class, the sedan won't be much different in driving. I've driven the C-Class, the E-Class and the S-Class. And driving-wise, um, I think the C-Class would be my favorite because it already gives you a little bit segment above, so a little bit more um, calmness in driving and a little bit effort, more effortless. At the same time, it's still sporty enough. If you think about the E-Class, it already feels a little bit bulky. Yes, it's a little bit more comfortable and also cozy and the air suspension is doing a great job in the long-term run driving, but it's not as sporty. So driving-wise, I think the C-Class would be my favorite. The question is just, you know, what you want. Chauffeur-wise, of course, in the rear seating comfort, then the S-Class would be the best. So depending on your really needs, Again, price performance wise and especially on the room, A class should be the one to go for. My personal pick would probably be the C class because before I go for an A class that is super high spec and super expensive, I can already get a C class. But then again, the price difference to the E class and then to the S class, this is so huge. You know, then this little price difference between A and C, this is then probably the, the thing where you can decide most about is it now an A or a C-Class for you. But definitely everything very interesting to see. The S-Class to me is rather, you know, redundant. Just a single chauffeur purpose if you seek that. For all other purposes, the smaller cars do just fine and even, you know, give you more sportiness. The S-Class doesn't give you more comfort in the front maybe. Um, because already the smaller cars nowadays have all the different features you might expect from such a luxury vehicle. And of course, you pay le way less money than two. So, what do you think about our comparison? Let's discuss your very favorite and what do you think about our special video.